Hey YouTubers, those of you who've tuned in to uh, video scrapbook uh, um, and, and for those of you who haven't seen me in a, a while and are looking at some of my uh, vintage uh, reporting uh, and updates or some of the uh, videos which uh, don't always include my, uh, my personage, my face, um, my semi-retired look may be a little bit uh, uh, surprising to you but uh, time marches on. And so will I. Uh, you know, I found now that uh, in the last few years that I've started to, uh, you know, take more leisure time for myself uh, while still going out and exploring things here and there. Uh, I'm going to a lot of movies uh, and uh, and enjoying them. I've always enjoyed going to movies uh, from the earliest age. And I, when I started writing my old school newspaper, I actually used to copy. Um, from the local newspaper, the uh, 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 movie reviews, and, and put them in. And one of my English teachers actually called me on that one time because I was, uh, you know, making comments about some Italian film as though I had seen it and it was rated R. And I, I'm sure I was definitely below the age uh, where it was acceptable for me to uh, to actually attend. But I'm attending the movies uh, more regularly now, and I like going and finding some that aren't necessarily getting a lot of promotion um, but uh, and that also sort of surprised me uh, in that they don't always follow the uh, standard uh, norms and they often have an ending that sometimes is satisfying not because it's the uh, the most pleasant or the most uh, um, uh, standard but because it's different uh, so I'm going to suggest the 10 of those. You know, everyone likes to do less than they like to do them in certain uh, quantities. I'm going to give you 10. This is 10 for uh, 2023, and I'm. this is a little premature because uh, the year hasn't actually ended yet. I think there are a couple on the horizon that I haven't seen yet that I'm probably going to enjoy, and I'll mention those. But here's my 10 in no particular order up until I give you the last three, which I, uh, at the moment, are my, uh, my favorite movies of the year. Uh, one of the movies was a, a Ray Romano movie, believe it or not, Somewhere in Queens. Uh, enjoyed this movie. I thought it, you know, I look at the trailers before I go read the, the overviews and uh, check uh, the casting. And this had a, a, a good cast. Um, it's a, it's sort of a comedy drama. Uh, it deals with, uh, I, and I like films that deal with uh, either true stories or, or that are relatable because they actually sort of uh, put people in situations that, you know, potentially you could wind up in. Even though there are a couple of those that are a little bit off that path that I'm going to suggest on this list. But Ray Romano's um, Somewhere in Queens, I thought, was an excellent film because it was a good blend um, of, uh, of humor as well as telling a very interesting family story, a story that everyone can relate to about a, uh, a young man uh, in high school, uh, the Romano son, who is uh, a potential college uh, basketball um, scholarship uh, athlete. And uh, it's about how the family has been pushing, or Ray in particular has been pushing uh, his son to that point. Uh, and then his son's sort of having to decide if that was really right for him. I won't give it all away, but it's a good story. I always try to do what I think is best for you. You know, you're lucky sticks. I have family that cares that much. We call them sticks because they're the long legs. Came out of the shoot that way. Just kept growing. Still growing. Really? Came out of my shoot? I also saw this year, um, I'm going to refer to my list now, <laughs> um, shortcomings. You know, I've, I've actually wound up uh, just totally by accident, I guess, but I think there's just more of them out there. Uh, been watching films that are, uh, have been generated by uh, Korean uh, actors, directors, writers. Um, and in fact, I'd say um, two of them have made my list. One of them hasn't. Uh, it was a comedy, which was a good comedy, it was funny, but uh, if I have to narrow it to ten, I'm just going to give you the two that I really like the most. Uh, and one of them, like I said, is, or if I haven't mentioned it, the name is Shortcomings. It's, a, it's about um, uh, a Korean um, uh, gentleman who is dating 
uh, and he has a falling out with his um, Asian girlfriend, but he has a fetish for um, Anglo um, <laughs> women. And, uh, and that sort of plays out here, but it basically is a very interesting look inside the, uh, the workings of um, that community, uh, how they sort of deal with, you know, sort of their own personal inner um, biases and prejudices and that sort of thing. And we, uh, most ethnic groups have this in some form or another. I was practically the only non-white person in my entire high school. And you never felt discriminated against? I definitely did, but not because I was Asian. Because of your inherent bad personality. It exactly. You have problems with anger, depression, your weird self-hatred. You could benefit from a little self-hatred. Interesting. I know you're going to want to blame this on society or on your race or whatever, but this really is just about you. Is this your rock bottom? What is she doing with that guy? They're being adorable. So we finally get to meet your mysterious boyfriend. Hello, Ben. Hi. Praise Jesus. Maybe just be honest with him. <laughs> is anyone sitting here? No. Um, the other. Uh interesting movie or one of the other interesting movies that I uh, enjoyed this year another kind of personal relationship uh, movie uh, a good person um, this uh, stars Morgan Freeman um, and uh, a few other up-and-coming actors uh, and uh, it's about uh, a, an unfortunate event where um, a fiance um, accidentally um, uh, kills in a car accident, kills members of the family that she is about to uh, marry into. And uh, Morgan Freeman is the father of the young man who the uh, young lady would have married, but uh, the wedding gets called off. So uh, it kind of deals with that, but not in a, you know, more uh, in a very, you know, you know, sullen way, in a way that sort of keeps you down. Um, uh, very good acting. A uh, very well-told story, a uh, very interesting ending. I'm worried about you. I want my life back. I want my child back. I need help. I know. Allison, don't run away now because of me. There are thousands of meetings. I'll find another one. Well, somehow you found your way to this one. Now, on the offbeat, uh, there's a film called Jules, J-U-L-E-S. That's the name that they give to a, I'm going to, I can't believe I'm saying this, to a, a creature that comes from out of space on a spaceship. This, uh, by the way, stars Ben Kingsley, the, uh, the uh, well-known and highly regarded actor who starred in Gandhi and other, other films. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> Suddenly, one day, uh, Ben, who's aging, and uh, his children have concerns, or his daughter has concerns that he may be getting a little, you know, senile uh, with age, uh, actually has a spaceship land in his um, backyard. And uh, it goes from there. All I can tell you is it's heartwarming, it's touching, it's my feel-good kind, kindness movie of the year. Um, and uh, I highly recommend it. Jules. Your dad was in here earlier. He said he was buying apples for an alien. Like an illegal alien? Thank you for the picture. He hands them to me all the time. Maybe he's trying to tell you something. Dad, come on. I'm worried. What you have said has not been normal. I'm okay. How can you say that when you're buying apples for an alien? The government is searching for a security satellite that crashed. Any moment we waste is a moment they can discover him. You've seen the movies. You know what happens to these guys when they fall to Earth. We will break the sky wide open. Jules has come to mean quite a bit to us. It's about Dad buying apples for an alien. National security, open the door. They're coming. 
us four hanging out together. We got along pretty well. We're so thankful for you. you got me. What the? Now, now I'm going to get to a, a point in my little list here. Uh, like I said, I, I, I some of these um, I haven't seen yet. I'm predicting and thinking that they're probably going to make my my top ten. Although I have to admit, last year uh, there were a couple of those that I thought were going to uh, be my favorites uh, and turned out to not be as satisfying as I had hoped. So I hope these. Um, uh, meet uh, my expectations. One of them is uh, uh, the Martin Cors Scorsese film uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, which is uh, a true, based on the true story about the Osage Indian uh, tribe uh, out in uh, um, the uh, West or the Midwest uh, and how uh, they dealt or the circumstances around how their settlement on land that uh, had oil impacted them and the community uh, and ultimately led to an FBI investigation uh, of uh, folks who were uh, involved in several murders uh, surrounding this case. It looks like a good film um, uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that. That's how you are. I don't know what you said, but it must have been Indian for handsome devil. <laughs> Why did you come here? I work with my uncle. Are you scared of him? Oh, he's a, he's the nicest man in the world. The old sage. The time is over. We got to take back control of our home. I was sent down from Washington, D.C. to see about these murders. We have so many deaths, we've lost count. It's just bad luck. Seems more like an epidemic than bad luck to me. Osage is dying by the enemy. Do not let them die alone. Evil surrounds my heart. You gotta pick a side. I don't even know if you love me anymore. Of course I love you. And kill these men who killed my family. Did your wife say who she was most afraid of? Don't do something you're gonna regret for the rest of your life. Another film that's uh, coming out shortly, just before that, is called Fair Play. Fair Play is an interesting film because it deals with uh, a couple that are engaged who work at the same uh, office, uh, you know, a high-powered uh, firm, and uh, the gentleman thinks he's about to be promoted. Uh, the girlfriend, uh, the fiancé, uh, is rooting for him, and then suddenly she finds out that she actually is going to get the job that he thought he was going to get, and it just plays on from there. It's called Fair Play, and it's a very interesting back and forth about um, the roles of men and women in the workplace and uh, relationships, and it looks like it's going to be a very interesting one. We're going to go grab a drink. Do you want to join? You made half the big calls last quarter alone. So, what did he want? He's promoting me. Congratulations. I'm sorry. Why? I'm so happy for you. Okay. Wonder how she got the fast pass. Reporting to her? Jesus, man. Look into this, let me know what you think. I'm still working on the three from before. Okay, I'll make this one the priority. Can I buy you another? Now that you're making more money than me? <laughs> oh. What are you doing? You know it's just a game. You play it very well. 
Are you going to pitch me to Campbell? I don't think it's a good idea. We both can't keep working here. I'm not quitting. This firm has become my religion. You have become my god. You give me this opportunity, I will give you everything I got. Are you out of your mind? You're going to end our relationship by setting off a bomb. We all do filthy things. But we don't trick it back into the office. Why is it so hard to accept that I deserve that job? I never got the shot! This job, it's killing us. Um, and yet another up well, a film that I've actually seen recently and debated whether I should put it on the list because there are a lot of good candidates, but I like this one because, once again, true story called Dumb Money. And if, for those of you who remember January 2021, after we were slightly starting to come out of the pandemic era, um, a young man from Brockton, Massachusetts, who attended a small college, Stonehill College, uh, was working for Mass Mutual, uh, which is, uh, you know, an insurance company, and they do other investments. And uh, he actually started promoting on Reddit and YouTube uh, his uh, his favorite stock, which was GameStop. GameStop, I should say. Uh, and he did similar to, I guess, what I'm doing now, basically just made videos and talked it up. He even showed his, you know, his, uh, his earnings, his portfolio on a regular basis, and others jumped in. And as for those of you who did hear about it, uh, it was a, it sort of spurred a big, uh, 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 a, a big uh, sort of induction of folks um, getting into the retail stock purchasing market. Um, in fact, I am now currently finally doing that through the electronic means, which I had put off for a very long time. And um, not a millionaire. <laughs> Don't expect me anytime soon. But this movie is a good telling of that story. Dumb money. I think they think it's a good investment. It looks like there's one guy driving all the buying. <sighs> Who is this? <laughs> Dumb money, man. Happy to take it. Wall Street is betting that this company is going to fail. But if it fails, these hedge fund assholes make a shit ton of money. 70,000 people have watched this video. Lawrence Kennedy, I love you! If he's in, I'm in. If he's in, I'm in. GameStop, those shares not stopping. Those stock is only going to go up. When they hit, I'm going to buy you a mansion. Let's drink to that. My brother is a fucking nerd. Wall Street must be seeing this, right? Holy fucking shit. Holy shit. You should probably dial in. Holy fucking shit. Do you have a minute? I, uh, um. Babe, how much did we make today? Five million. How much did we lose today? A billion. And yesterday? Four million. And yesterday? A billion. Babe. Yeah. We're like really fucking rich. You got rich dudes pissing in their pants right now. They're coming after you. We need to talk about the GameStop situation. Hold it, hold it Retail traders always lose. <laughs> You've been served. Wall Street cheated. Surprise, surprise. You have to testify before Congress. The game has changed. What's the point of winning the race if you let some dipshit steal the prize? A lot of people feel the system is broken. The whole idea of the stock market is if you're smart and maybe with a little luck you can make your fortune. Certainly not anymore. There's no hope for the little guy. Shit balls. Maybe now there is. Fuck yeah. Um, so that gets us up to, I think, about seven. Yeah, that gets us to about seven of the movies. Uh, and as we see the lights going here, so I better quickly tell you the rest. So my top three. Um, the movie Guy, the Guy Ritchie's The Covenant, which is about um, an officer uh, who is fighting in Afghanistan, who uses uh, interpreters, uh, Afghani interpreters, um, 
and eventually gets sent home, but one of his interpreters and his family, who the military has, the U.S. military had promised, would be able to get out because of issues of safety and concern, uh, because of their collaboration with the U.S., winds up not being able to get out. And this is a story about um, Jake Gyllenhaal, who plays uh, that officer, going back into Afghanistan to help get this man and his family out. Very interesting, very compelling. Um, uh, it's very gritty in terms of you feel like you're right there in terms of a lot of the activities that were going on in country in Afghanistan while they were there. Um, of course, the uh, retrieval may be slightly fantasized, but um, it has elements that uh, are relatable uh, and, and draw you along. For three weeks, this family believed you were dead. We owe that man your life. If there wasn't enough room to carry me across those mountains. Now he's hiding in a hole somewhere. I should be in that hole. You could stand me up at the gates of hell. Everything all right, John? No, everything's not all right. There is a hook in me. Ahmed and his family are in trouble. We can't intervene. I am going to have to get him out myself. Listen, you're gonna be alone. There ain't no you gotta adapt. This is what you got. If you can give me the location, if I can get him out of the country, it's too dangerous. You've become very popular with the Taliban. I miss you. Love you, Daddy. Love you, Daddy. You think if I could be free of this debt, I wouldn't be? You think I have a choice? There is no choice. No, I won't back down. So, so Guy Ritchie's um, The Covenant, I would list as my third highly recommended uh, film of uh, 2023 so far. My second, now the top two, this is a real struggle for me to determine which one I like the most between these two. Um, it was a real toss-up. One is a, a, a movie uh, that, that does a great job of showing uh, sort of a uh, the situation uh, between a couple um, or young people who, who grow up, uh, once again, this is one of the ones from Korea or based in Korea, uh, and then c they come to the U.S. Um, it shows how young children separated um, after their school, early school years, who uh, still have a, a pang uh, deep down and sort of uh, uh, an interest in each other who connect one who's living in uh, the States uh, and the other who's still in Korea, the male. Um, and they realize that their long distance relationship uh, can't be sustained. And they eventually kind of go their own separate ways. However, after the young lady has uh, gotten married um, and the young man um, who is dating in, in Korea decides he still kind of wants to see where his old friend is and how she's doing, they come together for a visit in New York. And uh, I tell you, it, the writing, the, um, the performances, the, the whole story is so relatable uh, and, and seems and rings so true for a lot of folks who, who uh, uh, I think go see it and I recommend it highly. It's called Past Lives. The guy flew 13 hours to be here. I'm not gonna tell you that you can't see him or something. If two strangers walk by each other in the street and their clothes accidentally brush, that means 
there have been 8,000 layers of Inyan. Between them. Want you to stay. Want you to stay. Uh, it just falls just slightly short as my second and only because the movie that I, at the moment, believe is my number one, which is called A Thousand and One, also rings so true. I know people from New York. Um, I went to school with them in college. Uh, I visited New York frequently. Um, and, uh, and I know the neighborhoods and the people and, and those who have a struggle as well as those who are doing well. And uh, A Thousand and One, uh, performed by a, uh, a young lady who I think primarily was doing rap and, and music prior to uh, taking on this role. And this film is also a first uh, time uh, big film uh, project of a young lady who is the director. Uh, just as uh, with past lives, um, you know, I, I can I can see all those characters in real life, um, and the twist in this particular movie, uh, I think, are what really made it. Ultimately, uh, aside from the fact that it's just so relatable and so real to me, is the twist that that sort of comes in at the end, which I totally had, had no, you know, uh, expectation of is what seals it for me as one of those films that are was satisfying not because of the the unfortunate circumstances which become positive circumstances to a certain degree but because it just was a full movie that uh, touched on all the bases um, and so I highly recommend a thousand and one as my favorite movie at the moment for 2023 and forgive this fading light. I should have started this review earlier, um, but uh, I'm going to try to do this at least once a year, and here we go. Terry, I want you to meet Lucky. Lucky's going to be moving in with us. How long? Hey, yo. You better get that ship off your shoulder. I know you hear me. You are my mother. Yeah. You a blessing. For your mom especially. You getting older now. Time for you to start thinking for yourself. Daryl's a very bright kid. Have you thought about MIT, Harvard? Something's gonna happen. I can feel it. Is your mother home? Maybe it's time to give him some of the answers that he's been looking for. Is Daryl your real name? Have you told anyone else about this? No, I'm scared. When are you going to realize that you are enough? I got a war for you, you know that? Against anybody. Against this whole city. But they're not breaking us up this time. Have a good one, and uh, if you uh, would like, you know, uh, to keep up with, and we'll have more videos, uh, you know, obviously of all sorts of thing, uh, things as we go on, uh, subscribe, uh, and let me hear from you.